Greetings, Green Witch here. So today I am up in the West Grizzlies, hunting, trying to refill my materials for Crips at Camp. That way I can do some more sales, trader, make some money, rank up, all that fun stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to hunt our way back to camp, give you a quick tour of my camp, and then either sell off something or something like that. We'll see what happens when we get there. This area up here in the West Grizzlies is one of my favorite spots to hunt. It's kind of a valley that leads into kind of a choke point. And if you come back the opposite way that I'm heading now, towards this way, it's a really good place to hunt. It, you can usually get 15 deer up here, sometimes more. You, there's always elk or moose, something like that. It's a really good place to start off. Because what I like to do is I like to hunt my way to my camp. And all along the way, try to get as much as I can. Either small animals, big animals, extra large. I always try to get at least one extra large every hunting trip. And on that one, I always try to get a three star. Because it's the biggest animal that you're going to get, so you might as well get a three star for it. Because for right now, until I get the hunting wagon, I can only carry one big animal. So until I rank up and get the hunting wagon, I just have to... Keep doing it like this, and it's not too bad. Because you can carry a lot of pelts. It's just you can't carry a, large, a lot of extra large pelts. So, it's not too bad. I'm trying to keep scanning the horizon. Let's see if I can see some deer. There's a camp right there, so that's probably going to mess this up a little bit. Oh, there's one. It's a two star. But we'll take it. Add it to the collection. Because usually, I, for the deer, I usually try to stay two star or above. I mean, I will take a single star, but because of, of how long it takes to actually fill up your materials needed at the trader camp, I try to avoid getting the, just one stars because it just takes so much longer doing it that way. But for all of the smaller animals that'll fit in my satchel, I'll take whichever ones I get. Poor, great excellent whatever it is I'll take any one of those it does not matter oh we got something right there looks like there's somebody riding it what is this dude doing dude just shot that deer like five times with a pistol yeah the quality of that's not gonna be worth anything <laughs> dude's probably starving to death it's probably the only thing he's got to hunt with low level dude or something just shot two deer with a pistol. Okay. Oh, and he's just dropping the pelts. He's not even keeping them. Dude, you know you can sell those, make money. Hmm. Anyway, let's take this. Gotcha. Probably scared that dude. He's probably like, what's that guy shooting at? Can't believe he's just dropping the pelts like that. He dropped another one. Eh, that's crazy. Hey, right, but I got an elk. That's three stars and my extra large animal, so that's going to be pretty much all I'm going to get for that. That's pretty cool. Got that pretty quick. And we'll throw that right on there. So, because I'm kind of curious to see how many extra large pelts in perfect condition will fill up your trading company fastest and hopefully i'll rank up enough to where i can get that wagon i can start doing some really good hunting trips let's head back out here see what we can get i don't know that dude running through there shooting again the oh there he goes again there's another guy over there yeah, that's pretty much going to end this hunting trip up here. See, that's one of the things I don't like about public lobbies. See, if this was a private lobby, there wouldn't be any interruptions. There'd be plenty of deer up here, but because of these guys, they've already chased it off. And that's the reason why I come all the way up to this part of the map, is because there's usually nobody up here. Not today. So, I might be able to get a few more critters. Somewhere in here. 
The two weapons that I mainly use is the 22 caliber for all smaller animals, smaller birds, and the rolling block rifle for pretty much deer and everything else. I don't hunt uh, coyotes or fox or any of the animals like that because they're basically dogs. I don't really want to hunt a dog. I mean, wolves are different because people are like, you know, that's like a dog. No, a wolf is the same as a dog the way that a dolphin is the same as a shark. They look similar, but they're completely different animals. Completely. Alright, what is that? Nothing. Alright, so this is where I will usually come to, is right here. And then hunt my way back to where I started the video. And like I said, there's a good... This is a really good place for hunting. You can get usually 15 deer, something extra large bunch of little small animals just running back and forth across this area and even sometimes there'll be a, a hideout right there at that one thing so you can actually come up here and get a treasure map or something like that so it's not too bad this is a really good area for hunting and just general exploring one of the things I wanted to show you before it gets completely pitch black is the new binoculars that you get as part of the collector. Now this is something that's really cool and it's actually more beneficial for the trading than I think it is for the collector. As if you see it uses dead eye but it doesn't drain your dead eye or your eagle eye. That's what it may more or less what it is. As you can see right there there's some little stink trail a Virginia possum. But it highlights everything that's of value which is really, really important. So then all you have to do is just put it away, pull your weapon back out, and roll back up on whatever critter that was, and take him out, and you got it. And just use your little eagle eye like that. Find out where he is. And you got it. And like I said, these small critters like this that I can put in my satchel, I'll grab them whatever quality they are. It doesn't matter, because you can fill that thing up with them. So just grab as many of these as you can, and it helps out. I mean, the better the quality, the faster it's going to refill your materials. But for this right here, it just, just really doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to keep hunting, and then I'm going to cut back in when it gets daytime. All right, so I, I did kind of okay during the night. I got a few more kills in. A couple good ones, quite a few bad ones. Not, you know, really too much. It wasn't really good of a trip as usually. But because it was so dark, there's no sense in even trying to record it because it's just it's a nightmare. But along the beach, along waterways, edges of water, lakes and stuff like that, it's a great place to hunt. And it's also a great place to find treasure. So if you've already got the shovel or the metal detector, come down here along these rivers and banks of the lakes and stuff like that. You're going to find plenty of treasure. It's definite. Like that right there, and that was really cool because I needed that. Okay. So, yeah. Ooh, that's something right there. Nice white tail bug. Drop that. Go we'll get him. And you can get quite a bit of good animals around here too. A lot of the smaller animals will be along this area at night. Raccoons and frogs and just all kinds of little creatures like that plenty of hunting like that and as it gets morning and dusk you'll find more deer and larger animals so it's a good area to check out if you're having trouble trying to find animals yeah i don't i wish i knew why sometimes it takes longer to skin animals like sometimes you'll just walk right up and it just takes everything and just instantly. And then sometimes it just goes into a little bit more dramatic episode of skinning or something. I don't know. I just wish we would just do it quick and be over with. Alright, so let's get to where we don't have the sun coming right into our face. Not too far from camp now. Oh, got something running toward us. A couple of 
with something. A couple of deer. Pronghorns. There we go. Let him run right in there. Got him. That's a very good way of getting animals. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it does not work. I've winged quite a few of them. But if you aim just off to the side or just above the head as they're running, depending on which direction, if they're running straight, then you want to aim right over the head. But if they're running towards the side, just to the left or right of whichever way they're running, and fire and let them run into the bullet, kind of leading the target, it works really well. Sometimes you'll wing them, and then you'll have to hit them again. It's a risk you have to take sometimes, but... If you you figure it out, you'll get pretty good at it. I've, sometimes I've been able to get three deer, one right after another, from a group running. It doesn't happen very often, but you can do it. Once you get that the firing pattern down, you'll you'll get you'll knock it out pretty quick. And see if I hadn't have got a large animal up where I was in the West Grizzlies, I would have tried to have come out here to the Heartlands where I'm at now and tried to have gotten gotten a uh, buffalo or bison whichever one's out here I can't remember which one it is I think it's just the bison it's usually right over you go at the top of this hill or back over that way you can find them a three star one of those is pretty good so I'm imagining once people start getting that wagon they'll just be filling them up with just the buffaloes because those are actually pretty easy to hunt basically like hunting cows there's a whiskey tree. There really isn't anything up here. See, I also notice when the lobbies are almost completely full, there's the deer activity is real slow too, so... I don't know. It just gets weird sometimes. But this little valley I'm heading down into now, this little ditch kind of runny thing, is a really good place to find stuff at night. And sometimes find it in the middle of the day. But usually in the middle of the day, the, the hunting gets real weak. The hottest part of the day, they'll wander off into the woods or whatever they're going to do. And I want to see if I can get a few more things before I head to camp. Just don't see anything. It's like somebody came running through here with a shotgun and just chased off all the animals. Which is probably what happened. Ooh, almost drove off that. That would have not been good with the horse. It looks like he's get, trying to get foggy too. Which sucks trying to hunt in. I don't see anything over here. Usually just moving along right through here, he'll kick up some rabbits. I don't even see anything there. There's something right over there. Wild boar. Take a chance and see if I got him. Nope. Oh, missed him twice. He got away on that one. I got one of them. Hopefully I didn't mess up the shot because it was a three star. Ooh, snake! Ooh, speaking of snakes, I want to tell you all a story about a snake. See, there was a friend of mine who used to work out, or I used to work with, and he used to live out. Pretty much in the swamps. I mean, like, right on the edge of the swamps. Like, Bayou Noir, that's what his house looked like out where he lived. So anyway, we're over at his house after work one day. It's getting late. His dad comes in there and he's like, Hey, man, check out this rattlesnake that I killed. And it was a huge rattlesnake. It's like three half feet long, big around as my arm. It's at least 15 buttons on the rattle. So we're just like, whoa, dude, you know, and he's all happy about it. And he takes it outside and throws it by the wood pile and you know we keep drinking beers and just going on about our business well later on some of his the guy I work with some of his friends showed up and they got talking about that rattlesnake again and he's like yeah it's right out there by the wood pile and one dude was like well man I want to go cut the rattle off of it and keep it and he's like yeah it's right out there by the wood pile just go out there and, you know here take this knife go cut it off and you'll be fine it'll be cool you can make a baby rattle or whatever you want to do with it so dude goes out there, he gets the, the rattle off of it, comes back inside, he's playing with it for the rest of the night, you know, shaking it, and little girls are walking by, and he's like, shh, 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 ah, you know, stuff like that. So, having fun. 
So the next morning, we all get up, you know, like like normal, you know, you wake up the day after party and, you know, kind of wander around outside, everybody's smoking cigarettes and stuff. Well, the guy I work with is standing there and he's like, hey man, he goes, I thought Scott cut the tail off that rattlesnake. And he's like, and his dad was like, yeah, he was playing with it all night. And we looked down and right there where the rattlesnake was laying was the same rattlesnake that was dead that his dad had shot with the rattle still on it. So that dude, Scott, went outside at night and picked up a live rattlesnake and cut the rattle off of it and somehow did not get bit. We do not know how this happened, but we consider him to be the luckiest man in the world because it was just amazing. And somewhere out there, there's a rattlesnake with no rattle. And I guarantee you that's the most pissed off snake in South Carolina. So you got to watch out for that. But that's the craziest snake story I've ever been part of in my entire life. <laughs> but anyway, let's start heading back over to the over here to the camp. It looks like hunting is getting really lean. I haven't seen much of anything besides that rabbit that I just killed. We can usually get some deer over here. Oh, there's one, but he already took off. Usually if you walk up here, there'll be quite a few deer down the roads, but I don't know. Doesn't seem like there's much now. It also seems like the more you hunt, the less there is when you start moving around to other areas. I don't know. And I've also noticed if you walk, if you put the gun away, more animals will come out. But as soon as you put the weapon away, you try to get animals. You can't shoot them. They take off. It's all crazy. It's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of things. All right. So it looks like there's nothing out here. My horse is disappointed. With this fog, you can't see anything. It's annoying as hell. Please see if we can't get a few more things before we get back to camp. There's nothing. Something right there. That's a one star deer, but pickings are getting skimmed, so let's take what we can get. There's some days on here. Oh, watch this. He's going to just ride right over and destroy it. No, went right around. That's pretty cool. I mean, there's some days on here you'll just kill it hunting. Just one right after another. Three-star animal. There's other days you'll just struggle to barely get enough food to survive. I don't know. I guess that's the realism of the game, but... It can be a quite a pain in the butt if you're trying to make money. And I've been going through money like crazy. Because I have upgraded a bunch of stuff at camp. I've been upgrading weapons, ability cards, you name it. I've been trying to get it upgraded. So far, it seems like it's going pretty good. I can't believe there's no more stuff out. Usually, you're running over rabbits. You're just they're running out everywhere. So you're holding a weapon. I shouldn't be too far from camp. Since I was had it set up down here. Ooh, this we're coming into the old spooky town. See, this would be a good place for the old zombie apocalypse kind of deal. This whole little plague town. I mean, it's even got the sign over there on the one building where it says keep out dead inside or something like that. It's not somewhere. I can't remember where it is. This is a pretty spooky looking little place. Should have more ghosts and stuff. Yeah, there, there it is in the back. It's pretty spooky. There's actually quite a few places that look like this out in the woods around here, old hunting cabins and stuff that people just abandon. So you can come upon some pretty spooky stuff like that. 
That was a squirrel. I don't know what, that, what I thought that was. Oh. See, I should have used small game arrows on that and I would have been able to keep it a three star, but I just, I don't like hunting with the bow for some reason. I don't know, it works great in story mode, but online it just doesn't seem like it works worth the damn, which I'm honestly believing all of the weapons are nerfed. It just, I was doing a lot better in online with a lot of the things that, especially the Springfield, that was my go-to weapon in story mode. And in online, it just it just seems weak. The same with the 22. I was able to do some serious damage on bad guys with that 22. And in online, you can barely kill rabbits from a long distance. It's almost worthless to have the scope on it. All right, so here we are at camp. We're here on the edge of Bayou Noir. Let's park this right here. Do a little quick tour. Oh, I got one of the new flags. I got the alligator up there because I got eaten by an alligator, so I want to use that as kind of a totem to keep them away. Now I'm using the trader theme mainly because it was free. And this over here was actually pretty cool. This was the stew pot thing. It's like 650 bucks. It's got a bunch of different recipes that you can make. It's actually kind of useful. Let's look right here. Let's click on this. Let's make this stew. Smell that so now, huh? when I eat this stew, it will improve all of my stats. That's pretty good. You can make a whole bunch of different ones. See, there we go. It's already refilled everything up. It's pretty good. Oh, let's see. Oh, let me show you the gun thing. So we got the gun storage, which is actually pretty cool. Weapon locker. So all of the weapons that I don't use, I pretty much store here. Even though I've bought all the weapons again. I don't know why I did it, but for some reason. And you can see I've got the tent almost to the final one. Didn't think I was going to upgrade it, but I don't know. Just kind of went with it. But this, the advanced fire was something I was kind of like, man, that's going to be stupid. Why would I want advanced fire? This has actually been pretty beneficial because the time that it takes for cooking, it speeds it up. But one thing that still kind of bummed me out is I was really hoping this was going to have like a cook all feature to where I could have just been like, yeah, I want to cook 10 big game meat with time or whatever. And it just, you know, boom. And it would just cook all of them. Even if it took a few minutes to do it, it would still... I don't have to keep doing this where I cook or store and all that, you know. It would just cook a whole bunch of them, and then I could store them. That's what I was really hoping for. But it's not too bad. It goes through them pretty fast. And I'd say this the slowest of this cooking is the fastest of your regular cooking, if that makes any sense. All right, so let's head over here to Crips, turn in on everything that we made in our little hunting trip. It wasn't really good, but... We did decent. Low on materials. Gonna be out of supplies before too long. Turn all this in. Okay, this will have to do. I suppose this will do. Quite a few of these. Yes, beggars can't be choosing. Good. Some of them are two star, majority Very one nice. star, but I got some good stuff in there. Okay then, no comment. Good that stuff. Should bring us up pretty good. Yeah, anything's better than nothing. It looks like we have enough. Beautiful. To do one sale. Oh, didn't mean to cancel out of that. Now it won't let me do it. Come on, button. There it goes. All right, so let's do a local delivery. Good news. We have another batch ready for market. Buyers are lined up not too far from here, so all you have to do is head over and make the sale. <laughs> I just keep surprising myself. And to think my pa said I'd be a drunken hobo my whole life. All right, so all I have to do is just deliver this and basically just drive there and that'll be it and get paid. These delivery missions are pretty simple. There's usually nobody coming for you. I've rarely ever get messed with by any other players. 
So it's been pretty good. But I also am only using the small wagon. I can upgrade to the bigger wagon, but I figured I'm not going to do that right yet. Because in GTA Online, I bought everything. I'd buy this and that. Whatever the DLC sent out, I would buy. And I would upgrade everything and just burn up through all my money. I'm not going to do that in Red Dead Online. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this small wagon and just go with that and just make money like this. I mean, it'll probably take me a lot longer, but I think it's going to be a lot easier in the long run because I won't have to deal with it being that much more of a incentive to steal. You know what I'm saying? It's just a small wagon. It's not worth that much. So maybe it'll keep people from you know, wanting to mess with me. I mean, if they want to, you're going to be taking it into your own hands, but I'm hoping that that'll be the way it'll work. And as you see how I'm cutting across this map right here and I'm not taking the road, this is something you want to do at your own risk. If you are good at reading the mini-map, then by all means do this. If you are not good at reading the mini-map, and what I mean by reading the mini-map is the actual elevation part of it, where you can see the lines where it lets you know where if the lines are real close, there's getting ready to be something that's steep, or if they're real wide apart, it's kind of a flat area. That's what you really need to pay attention to. Because if you wreck this wagon, then you have to get a horse, and you can carry one piece of it to go deliver. And it's going to bum you out, because you spent all that time and stuff trying to get this far, so... You really don't want to mess it up. You don't want to go through any deep water. Now, I don't know about the second wagon once you get that, what if you can do. But with this one right here, you really want to be really careful. Ooh, like, look what I'm talking, I'm saying right now. And, <gasps> I almost flipped it. If I'd flipped it, then that would have been just a perfect example of why you shouldn't do what I just did. But we're not too far away, hopefully. Like I said, it's pretty uneventful. Look at this deer. He's like, he's my deer. He's just, what's going on, dude? If I had my weapon out, though, and I was trying to hunt, you wouldn't see that. He'd just be like, later. It's like he wants to come with me or something. All right. Oh, gunfire. That means there's raiders at the delivery spot. So that means we're going to make a little bit of extra money. Maybe get some bonus stuff. Pull up right over here. And you definitely want to make sure before you do a mission, or a sail mission, that you have the weapons that you want to have because you can't pull them off your horse before you leave. Well, I mean, you can probably jump off the wagon and get on your horse and stuff like that, but if you don't remember to do that, you're going to be stuck with the same weapons that you were hunting with. That's my guy. See, I like this rifle. It's working pretty good. Oh man, look at all these dudes run out. Just pick these guys off. See, the bad thing is, you really want to get all of these guys taken out as fast as possible. Because the longer the gunfire lasts, the more chance it's going to draw somebody in who's going to investigate to see what's going on. So I just have to stick back, take them out, sniper rifle. And then move in, clean it all up afterwards. One guy over here. Come on, dude. Come on. Poke your head up. Ah, there you go. I think that's all of them. Cool. So now I'm just going to jump back in this wagon, take it back down here. But I'm not going to go to the dot yet because I want to loot all those guys. Because sometimes if you deliver it, when you come back out, most of the guys will be gone. Or sometimes none of them will be there. So I'd like to take care of that before. And plus I have plenty of time. There's nobody else around. So might as well get as much as I can. Plus when you loot these guys, there's a good chance you can pick up some bonus treasure. It helps out with the collector. Gold tooth. Hey, not bad. wonder why he had that in his pocket. Half a bottle of rum, seven cents, and nobody in this group's got a dollar on them. Oh, there we go, like I was saying. 
A bonus treasure. Got this guy right here. Cool. Wasn't much, but every little bit counts. Plus anything I could sell to the fence. Or to Madame Mazar, that's extra. And then we just pull up here and deliver it. And that's pretty much it for these missions. Those things are pretty much simple. It's the easiest money you'll make. Alright, well this is Grey Witch. I hope this video was fun for you as it was for me. And I will see you next time. Peace!